So, you know, then the next question really becomes, okay, so if we have a high saturated fatty acid content within the VLDL, okay, um, again, it's being in the triglycerides, the phospholipid membrane, um, we can, wherever we find it. Where did the saturated fatty acids come from? Um, is it directly from consumption? And I just want to first point out before we get into maybe more of the technical stuff, some of the clinical trials that can help us understand this a little bit better. And so this is one of my favorites um, by Dr. Brittany Volk um, that was published a while ago. And it's really great because this was a feeding study. So, you know, they kept track of what the patients were eating. It wasn't a free for all. Are they eating what they were telling them to eat or not? They provided all of their food. And this was patients with metabolic syndrome. They went through six feeding phases. And so they did a run in with a very low carbohydrate diet for everyone, less than 50 grams of carbohydrates a day. And every three weeks they increased the carbohydrates in the diet all the way up to a 346 grams, which was C6 feeding phase. And the other thing to note here is the saturated fat content. So when we were at the low carbohydrate end here in C1, they were consuming 84 grams of saturated fatty acids a day. Okay, so that blows away any um, guideline on saturated fat. I mean, so far above what anyone would consider um, at goal. And then we get down to the C6 and we're much less, 32 grams, um, again, uh, what happens to the fatty acids as people are run through these six phases. And, and Sarah, just to be clear, this is basically an isocaloric feeding study, which means as you're ratcheting up the content of carbohydrate, you're commensurately reducing at a caloric level, the amount of saturated fat, right? I believe this study did not change the number of calories they were consuming, or did it? Correct, they did okay. not, okay? And so what happened um, to the um, saturated fatty acid levels in the blood, and for that matter, other, other fatty acid levels in the blood? So what happened over these six phases, okay? So here we have saturated fatty acid levels marked, okay? So here's the baseline at that run-in, okay? And we see when we have the very high saturated fat level, very low carbohydrate, okay? Here we go. And what's really interesting is what happens as we march along here, down to C6. And if you remember, this is much lower saturated fatty acid content of the diet, okay? Um, much higher carbohydrate intake. What we see is that it's actually, the saturated fatty acid content is actually higher with the lower saturated fat intake. And we're gonna come back and talk to, about the science behind that. But I think it's really important for people to see this clinically. And then maybe when we get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty, um, it can make more sense, okay? I mean, it's, it's actually statistically insignificant in terms of Correct. C16, right? Which is the dominant saturated fatty acid. So, so palmitic acid, it trended towards an increase as saturated fat, dietary saturated fat went down. Um, and, sat and carbohydrate went up, but it didn't reach significance. And um, the only one that actually did significantly increase was C14, right? Yeah, actually um, C161 as well. And that one is we're gonna spend oh, oh, yes, but, a little but, bit but, of time but, on. Yeah, 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 no, okay. but as a saturated fat, it was really just- Oh, as a saturated yeah, yeah, fat, yeah, yes. Yeah, so- But the point of this is, we didn't have these really high levels of serum saturated fatty acids 
when we were consuming, when these participants were consuming this right. very high saturated fat diet. Yeah. I mean, essentially, and this is important, it stays the same. Yeah. If anything, there's a trend, okay, to higher serum saturated fat in the low fat arm, okay? But certainly we do not see a rise in the high intake of saturated fat. That's super important. And again, it goes against what I was saying earlier on. You know, you are what you eat. Well, okay, if that's true, then when I consume a very high level of saturated fatty acids, why am I not seeing that? again, in the blood, in the serum. Why are we not seeing that? And, and what's nice in this study is you've exhaustively looked at where the fatty acids are. So obviously the most efficient place we store fatty acids is in the triglyceride, um, but you also store it within the cholesterol ester and it's obviously in the phospholipid as well. But regardless of where you look, you see no association between dietary saturated fat and fatty acid composition with respect to saturated fat. That's right, that's right. And I wanna really quick draw attention here to one more that we are going to be talking more about, and that's 16-1 that's palmitoleic acid. And we're gonna talk more about why that's important. But as we can see here, when we follow that across, it significantly rises when we have less saturated fat and more carbohydrates. And you can see that is statistically significantly different in every place that we're looking, okay? So moving on, when we take here a low saturated fat diet, low fat, low saturated fat diet, and we compare it to a low carbohydrate, high saturated fat diet over 12 weeks. This is from Jeff Volick's group from 2008. And what I like here is you can see very readily with these pie uh, charts exactly what the content of the two diets were. So again, we really have it flipped you know, high carbohydrate, low carbohydrate, low fat here on the left to a very high intake of fat on the right. And again, below it, the two different levels of saturated fat that we're comparing. 12 grams to three times as high in the low carb diet at 36. So then Sarah, what happens these are again both, to the- These are both really low calorie studies. Was this an ad lib feeding study or were these deliberately calorie restricted? Uh, how, how was this study done? Yeah, these were both, they wanted the calorie intake of the two studies to be the same. So as you can see, they're about 1500 calories a piece. And were they deliberately calorie restricted? Yes. So what we can see here is that what we have when we take a look at these two arms is taking a look on the right to the change in serum saturated fatty acids. We can see in the carb restricted diet, you know, significant decrease um, versus the low fat diet. So again, in the much higher saturated fatty acid arm, we see a significant decrease down, okay? Whereas we do see a drop in the whoops, saturated fatty, uh, low saturated fatty acid intake group, but not nearly as much as we see with the carbohydrate restricted group. Once again, you know, arguing against you are what you eat. And I wanna now get in a little bit more to this, what I think is actually even more important which is the change in the palmitic, palm, palmitic acid, excuse me, palmitoleic acid. Get all these palm uh, messed up when I try to talk about it. Easier to just think of it as 16-1. Yeah, so, so pal, pal, palmitic acid is 16-0, palmitoleic acid is 16-1. They look almost the same, except that palmitoleic, the 16-1, has that double bond at the N7 position, and you're gonna, explain in a moment which enzyme does that and why that matters, right? 
right, absolutely. You know, what is it about this? It's not a, it's not a saturated fatty acid. So why do we care so much? What happens to 16-1? But it's pretty evident here what happens, first of all, and then we'll talk about why. What happens is that with 16-1 in the high saturated fatty acid group, it drops significantly. Where in the low fat group, again, low saturated fatty acid group, it actually goes up. And this is a statistically significant difference. Okay, much more significant even as we look than the change in the serum fatty acids. All right, so now I'm gonna pull up a graph of these results to look at it a little better and then I wanna get into the actual science of it. This is the very low carbohydrate arm on the left and it is the low fat arm on the right. And so what we see here, and we look at total saturated fatty acids, um, is that it has dropped, okay, 5% between the um, low carbohydrate group and the low fat group, total saturated fatty acids. What about the 16-1? And what we see here with the 16-1 in much more significant statistically is that we see between a, um, a low carbohydrate diet and a low fat diet that we have a more significant decrease in the 16-1 with the low carbohydrate higher fat diet now so there's a couple things going on here or comments for there yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think there's a couple things going on for people that are going to be overwhelmed by this table and i apologize if you're just listening to this without watching it on video uh, i'll do my best to, to 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 explain what's going on here so the the first thing to notice here is both of these uh, groups of patients started out with quite elevated triglycerides so um they're uh, in the first group, in the group that was randomized to the very low carbohydrate diet, their average triglyceride at the start of this study was 211 milligrams per deciliter. That's sky high. At the end of 12 weeks, it was down to about 104 milligrams per deciliter. It fell by about 50%. Conversely, the group that started out in the low fat arm, also very high triglycerides to start, 187 milligrams per deciliter. By the end of 12 weeks, they saw about a 20% reduction to about 150 milligrams per deciliter. Now this is where these tables get a little bit confusing because the table is showing both the relative and absolute reduction of the relative or constitutive fatty acid. In this case, 16-0 and 16-1 and 7, the two we're talking about. What does that mean in English? It means that when you look at the total amount of saturated fat reduction on a relative basis, both groups saw a slight reduction, but it was statistically more significant in one group than the other. The low carb group was a 12% reduction versus 5% in the low fat group. And on an absolute basis, that difference was even greater because the low carb group had such a significant reduction in total triglyceride uh, as well. And that's the dominant source of where you're going to see these fatty acids. And of course, the reverse is true uh, when it comes to 16-1. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.